Hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome to today, guys. Can you hear us well? You can talk in the chat. Yes. OK, perfect. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. Uh, get yourself comfortable. We are here for 30 minutes, at least. Uh, I'm Gabriel from the marketing team of Toucan. And uh, I'm with Jeremy. Yeah, uh, product expert uh, within Toucan uh, since five years now. And uh, I've seen hundreds uh, of uh, projects, uh, especially in embedded analytics context. Uh, so yeah, I will uh, have the pleasure to, to present you uh, this, uh, this webinar with, uh, with Gabriel. I uh, share this. Uh, OK, maybe. You, uh... I will talk a bit about the concept of today and uh, in the webinar and the series. So it's a new concept we're launching called uh, uh, Ends On With Toucan. Uh, it's a concept where we have 30 minutes to dig into a specific topic, a specific feature, sometimes new features like today. And the idea is to yeah, go inside the product, share our vision about the new feature, share our vision about the new concept we are, we are showcasing. And it's uh, the first episode of a new series. Uh, will happen every month, uh, every second Thursday of every month. So yeah, it's the first one. So share the feedback. <laughs> we'll learn with you guys. And uh, if you want to see, uh, I don't know, more, uh, more product stuff, more slides, more I don't know, but we'll adjust uh, yeah, during the, 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 the future episodes. And, uh, and yeah, maybe uh, we can start by presenting the, the, the topic of today. Yeah, yeah. So today we will talk about the uh, embedded analytics. So yeah, for those who don't know this term, it's a part of the uh, analytics world where the, the chart uh, that uh, you can build uh, and integrate it uh, directly into any website, application, uh, software. Uh, and yeah, the, the end goal here is a better experience for the end user so that he has um, insight from your data directly into the software he use on uh, the everyday uh, life. So this is uh, the, the, main, the main thing here is to avoid him to switch between platforms between the analytics platform and the software, your software. Uh, and so we can bring some insight directly uh, into uh, the application. OK, so inside the uh, embedded analytics, there is a main, uh, I would say, component uh, in it, which is around the data personalization, uh, which consists in uh, bringing to each user only the data uh, they need. Okay, so bringing with a single chart uh, the data, the right data to the uh, right user. So it's good for the end user, of course, because you will have um, a personalized experience inside uh, your software. And it's good also for you because you only build uh, one chart that will address several users. Uh, in a personalized way. So we'll talk uh, about uh, this concept. Just to start, I will show you a concrete uh, example of uh, how you can uh, embed some charts into any software. So here, uh, as, a, as a demo example, I will take a fake CRM, so Customer Relationship Management System, we built in order to showcase uh, how to embed to coin to a software. So here it's not Salesforce, it's not uh, HubSpot, it's called Breezy. And uh, I will just uh, log in as a, as a user uh, called uh, Sharp. And here I just, I will not show you all the, the CRM, but I will just show you how uh, data personalization uh, take place uh, into uh, into any uh, any software, actually. So here uh, I am in the, uh, uh, the software in Breezy, 
And as you can see, I have some insight uh, coming from some charts here. Uh, everything uh, in black is actually a component coming from uh, Toucan. So uh, each of these components has been built uh, into Toucan and integrated into Breezy or any software. What I wanted to show is how you can personalize data. So here, for, here, for instance, I'm connected with the Charles uh, account. And on this, uh, on this uh, little widget, I have my lead pipeline. And as I am Charles, I have the value of 9.8 million. And if I log out and let's say I will connect with another uh, user, so still with a, a two letter password, but that's fine. So here I will take the Clement uh, account. And as you can see, I have the same element, the same component here coming from Toucan, but I have different value, 1.1 million corresponding to my data uh, as I am connected with another account. So this is a preview of the uh, end result uh, you can achieve uh, with, um, uh, with data personalization. And now I will uh, explain you how it works uh, behind the scene. Okay. So uh, fasten your seal belt. It might look uh, technical, but I will try to make it uh, as yeah. simple <laughs> as possible. Uh, and uh, yeah, but uh, do not hesitate to ask some, uh, some stuff uh, if, you, if you need some clarification. So the first step is about authentication. It's in Breezy. So Charles, which is my user, will use a, a logging page in order to login into Breezy. Here, there is uh, behind the scene, um, the front end of uh, Breezy uh, will ask to uh, its backend, so the backend of Breezy, if Charles uh, is a known uh, user and if he has access uh, actually to Breezy. Okay. The backend will then search into the user base of Breezy in order to find Charles, uh, to check if the password uh, matches. And generally, uh, in every software, you have several other additional information about your user that you already use in your software. Here, to make it simple, I just I will just uh, uh, talk about, uh, let's say, uh, country uh, properties. And I know that Charles uh, lives in the US. Then the backend send the answer, uh, uh, the backend in Breezy, uh, we are still in Breezy, uh, send the uh, answer that Charles is uh, a user and he can access to Breezy. And so the front end, uh, now uh, we have uh, Charles that can enter uh, the uh, interface of the software. So everything is in Breezy uh, until now. But in the same time, uh, as uh, in Breezy, you will have to display a chart coming from Toucan. Toucan will need some information about the user. So what happened behind the scene is that the back end of Breezy will send the information about the connected user, about Charles, to Toucan back end. So saying, OK, Charles, he's from the US, for instance. The back end of Toucan then uh, will do uh, the data filtering. So he will go into uh, the data in order to pick only the relevant data for the connected user. Here, uh, we don't care if you are connected to uh, a main uh, a database or a data warehouse solution like Postgre, BigQuery, Redshift, uh, any, uh, any technology behind it. If you are connected to uh, some API coming from your, uh, from your tools, 
Uh, it can be as well a custom API that you already uh, developed, or uh, you can as well use our uh, built-in uh, database that we provide for each of our uh, customer. But the principle is the same. The backend will just pick the right data uh, from the, the right uh, data source in order to uh, Uh, deliver the uh, personalized data to charts. We are uh, at the end of the process. Our backend then will send the filtered data to uh, our chart, to, so to the Toucan uh, front end. So here I have my little uh, value, value chart widget uh, that is uh, now updated with um, the data coming from the, from the backend. And last step, uh, we are now uh, available to display the chart into a, uh, the front end of Breezy. And so now Charles uh, just enter into Breezy and he has uh, some Toucan elements, some charts available, already personalized uh, with his data in it. Okay, so on this, um, uh, so here uh, we, seen, we have seen that there is some data transfer between the back end of Breezy, of the embedding software, uh, and Toucan. In uh, how we do, uh, we do this data transfer, we use uh, a, tech, a standard technology in the software uh, industry, so it's uh, JSON Web Tokens which are basically uh, a way to uh, transmit data, uh, data in a secure way. Uh, and so each time a user will connect to Breezy, the backend, of course, will authenticate uh, him, but as well, the backend will generate a token and send it to Toucan to allow the last step Uh, so that Toucan can display the charts. In this token, uh, it's basically uh, the, the, the backend of Breezy will send the information uh, about the user. Uh, to do that, um, he will have to uh, respect the uh, user model that is used in Toucan. I will not go into the detail of every component of our user model which is uh, important today uh, for, the, for this flow, for the embedded flow, is that you have the ability to um, give to your user some attributes. Okay, this is additional data uh, that you can send uh, to Toucan about the user. It looks basically like this. So here is uh, an example uh, of uh, a preview of a token payload that you can, uh, that you can uh, send to Toucan. And here, for instance, uh, on Charles, uh, the Breezy is sending two attributes here, one country and one department, and he uh, sent the value for Charles. So he's from the US and the marketing department. And you can Uh, send like this several attributes depending on the use case. And so now to come, uh, when he reads the, the, the token, uh, has this information and uh, is able to uh, personalize the data experience uh, uh, behind this. Okay, so I will show you now how we can use this user attribute in order to filter data and as well to do some other stuff uh, in Tuco. Uh, is that clear for everyone? Uh, if you have any question, maybe yeah. let's take a quick breath. Let me go here. Okay. Okay, so here uh, the process starts in the, the platform uh, interface. So here I'm in on a traditional uh, Toucan platform with my, all my applications. So the first step in the process will be to build 
uh, to create the user attribute within Toucan. Okay, so that we uh, afterwards we will be able to simulate the end user context uh, that uh, your end user uh, will have in your software. So the first step is to create uh, this uh, user attributes. So it's in the user section of the settings. And we have a new tab here, uh, which is uh, quite new, that allows you to create several uh, properties uh, about your user. Today, I will just focus on the user attributes here. For the demo purposes, I will create uh, three uh, user attributes. I will create the client user attribute, which will um, allow me to filter the data between my different clients. Because in my case, I will have uh, all my uh, clients in the same database, in the same table. But of course, I need to display uh, the data from, uh, for a client that is uh, his own data and not the data from another client. So I will have a user attribute that uh, can, uh, I will use this uh, to uh, filter the data. So this is the first one, the client. I know as well that my data is uh, split by region. And this is an information that I, I will send with uh, my tokens. So I create the region one and I will create just uh, a first uh, name one, just to show you other stuff you'll see uh, later. So here, I have my three uh, attributes that are created, and now uh, they are available for all the application of my uh, in my uh, platform. Okay. Uh, now the next step uh, is about to create the chart to filter the data. So it's uh, uh, every time in a, a dedicated application in Toucan. So. Here, uh, again, in the settings of the application, I have a new uh, menu here, which is called variables management, uh, that will allow me to uh, manage all the variables accessible in my application. Again, there are a lot of uh, different type of variables, but I'm interested into my user attributes. And as you can see, uh, I have my three uh, user attributes I just created. I have other user attributes coming from elsewhere, but we don't care. Let's just focus on the, on the three uh, main user attributes. And here in, in this uh, interface, I can set up what we call a staging default value. Uh, the staging mode in, uh, in Toucan is basically the where you can edit and build uh, Toucan. So there is the staging mode when, where you can edit and the production mode when you can actually see the end result. Uh, so it's like uh, yeah, a basic uh, development environment and a production environment. And each application has these two uh, components. And what default value means, it means that uh, as a builder, I will be able to set up some values on each attribute in order to have a, a known context so that I can build my uh, charts. So maybe it's not really clear, but you, you will see uh, with the, the end, end result later. But on my uh, client um, uh, user attribute, uh, let's say uh, I know uh, that I know very well the data coming from my uh, Apple uh, client, so I will put Apple uh, as a default value for, uh, for the client uh, attribute. Uh, region, I will set up it with California. Uh, and on the first name, uh, let's call him uh, Chris. Okay, so now as a builder, I will have this context uh, available in order to build my charts. 
Um, next step, I want to use this user attribute in order to filter my data. So here I just imported a basic uh, data set uh, about some smartphone uh, uh, sales data. As you can see, I have a column uh, which uh, uh, help, to, uh, help to classify the data between my different clients. Uh, corresponding to each client, I have different smartphone models. Uh, and I have some geographical uh, information about the region and the city where the revenue uh, is considered. So a basic uh, data set. And my end goal here will be to filter this client uh, column with the user attribute clients, sounds logical, and the same principle for region. I want to filter it with the user attribute uh, region that will be in the uh, token. Okay. So for that, uh, I will create just a data set with a simple uh, step in new prep. So our uh, main interface to, uh, to do some data preparation. So I will do just a filter rows uh, function, which is well known and allow me to uh, filter a column. So here I will filter my column client. Um, and here with the, this blue magical button where you have all your variables. Uh, now, uh, so I have some variables about the date, the language of the application, etc. But what is important on my side is this user attribute I can use. Uh, and I want to filter, uh, of course, my date, my client colon with my client user attribute. And you can see the default value here, which is Apple. I do the same with the region. So I filter the region colon with the region user attribute with the default value of California. And now when I save, I have a, a a preview of my data uh, after my uh, my preparation and as you can see i have only uh, apple uh, values and california one it's already uh, filtered now i can save it let's just call it the filtered data set I'm just waiting for a quick refresh. When it's white, it's good. It's good. So I can now uh, go into the, the chart part where you, you are building your uh, visualization. And I will just create one, uh, just deleting some tests to make it clean. Uh, and I will start with uh, creating my chart. So I just select my data set that is already uh, filtered. So I will select this one. I will choose my chart into our library, but let's keep a traditional leaderboard. Uh, I want to see the split of revenue by model. So I will select model as a label and revenue as a, a measure. Uh, I have already my preview. Um, here, as you can see, I have only uh, Apple model, which is good because uh, it's filtered. It, it shows that it's already filtered uh, on the uh, client uh, column. Um, I will just add uh, a filter. Uh, so I will just create a filter. I will uh, set up a filter uh, allowing the user to uh, select several city, cities uh, to, to see the data. So I will use the same, uh, the same data set. So on the column uh, city, let's call it city. Basically, I create it. Um, here, the, the yellow uh, indicator show me that the filter is already connected uh, automatically by Toucan with uh, the chart. 
So when I, I change the value, uh, it's uh, updating the, the chart. And as you can see, uh, and it's a good scene uh, as well, I have only uh, cities coming from California. So it shows that even my filter uh, is already personalized. So each uh, end user will have his own value in each filters and of course in each uh, chart. Uh, just to show you uh, other stuff we can do with user attributes, I will just uh, add a narrative because I want uh, to do uh, to uh, to do some uh, dynamic text uh, for my uh, end user. I will just write it uh, 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 in a hard coded way, and then I will replace it by uh, uh, dynamic values uh, later. So here are uh, your uh, sales results for April in. California, uh, sorry, in California. And here it's hard coded, but I can use some syntaxes for those who are, who are already doing some uh, embedded analytics. They already know this syntax in order to use um, a value coming from the user attributes. So I will just uh, copy it, uh, paste here. And uh, uh, so here I just have to uh, set up the name of uh, my uh, user attributes. So here I want to display the first name. Uh, here I want to display the client. And here the user attribute region. So today it's the only um, a point in the workflow where you have to use uh, some code, some kind of code, even if it's a simple syntax, but we are working uh, and developing some stuff so that tomorrow you will just have to, you know, you know, uh, do like in uh, some tools, like with a, a slash, uh, you can have access to the different variables directly without uh, having to write uh, some uh, some uh, syntax. So here my syntax is not properly set up. Sorry, and this I will just make it bold <coughs> so that we can see. I have a quick question in the chat. Yeah, from Xavier. Hi, is it possible to display or to hide the story? according to the connected users. Example, I'm user A and I can see the story one and two. Another user, user B, can see story two and five, user C and so on. Yes, uh, yes, yes, you, you can do, uh, you can do it, uh, of course. Uh, if you are in a, an embedded context, a pure embedded context, when you embed a single chart, uh, you will have the ability on your side, so, in my example on breezy side, I will have the ability to display a chart or another one. So it's going uh, thanks or uh, SDK that will allow you, uh, allows you to select, depending on the user, to select uh, an embed or another. If you embed uh, or all application, uh, it's uh, something possible. Uh, you have uh, what we call visibilities in it, and you can hide or not some content uh, depending on the user. So depending on the user attribute, yes. So the answer is yes. Do we have a documentation about this? Uh, maybe? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you can file answer in the documentation and uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that it's clear? Uh, through the SDK section. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So here, Thank as you. you can see, yeah, good news. Uh, I have all my uh, default values that are properly set up. So I create uh, the sales from Apple, California. So I have now a pretty personalized uh, story. And I will now show you how I can embed uh, it in Toucan. So in staging, I see my default value. In production, I should see how oh, I forgot to publish. As always, don't forget to publish your work. 
um, because when you embed, you are actually embedding the production mode of uh, Toucan. Uh, so I will just generate my script here. I just uh, want to display the story header. The story header contains my filters. So when you have filter, you have to uh, select yes here. I just click to generate the embed. Today, uh, I see no default value here. I see the production mode. Uh, maybe we'll change that to give you a proper preview with the default value as well as you were in staging mode. But uh, it doesn't matter here. I just want uh, to copy the script. So we have two technologies. Generally, we use web component, but for some reason, you can use uh, an iframe. Um, and now I just open my, I don't know, coding software. Here I, I use CodePen and I just do uh, Control V in order to uh, paste the script uh, generated by Toucan. My chart is not available. It's, uh, it's okay. It's fine because here, as you can see, I need to insert my uh, token in order to send the information and the user attributes uh, to Toucan. Because here, Toucan has no information about any user. So I just, uh, I created a token just before the session. I will show you the content. So you have in the embed manager section, you have a tool in order to uh, check your opaque token. You have everything here to set up the token mechanic. Uh, it's, uh, you can copy paste the code directly into your, your software. But here, what we need is this tool. I paste my token and here is the content of my token. So here I will use, uh, uh, the, my three attributes on this time, Samsung in the Nevada and it's, uh, John. So I can uh, go back into my code and paste uh, my uh, token. And now I should have the end result with the expected value. So here it's okay. I have, I'm John. Uh, I work for Samsung in the Nevada. It's okay. The data is filtered. I have only a Samsung model. My filter is also personalized. I have on, only cities coming from Nevada. And yeah, voila. I mean, that's nice. basically uh, it. And this is all the mechanics. So you will have to generate each time uh, a user uh, uh, logged in your software, you will generate a token, sending the user attribute, and dynamically, uh, Toucan will provide you with uh, a personalized uh, chart. Okay. Clear. Uh, I have a quick question on the chat. In the mm -hmm. chat, can you show again? I think, uh, tell me if I misunderstand, but can you show again the flow when you go from staging to production and open the page uh, to embed and copy paste ah, the, okay. the web component? I think okay. this is it. You want to so, see again? So it works like this. So you build everything in staging. Uh, you need to publish, of course, in order to copy the staging mode into the production mode, and then you, you can embed it. So you switch to, to, to embed, I switch to production. Here on the three uh, little dots, I have the traditional uh, uh, option uh, available for end user, and me, as I am connected uh, as an admin or as an uh, Ad builder, I have this embed story uh, menu, and when I click, uh, it displays. So here, it's already uh, generated, and I just have to click on copy uh, the embed script. I choose my uh, type of script I need, and here it's a, need, uh, it's a web component, and it's already copied. Uh, in the, my clipboard, and I can I can paste it uh, in my code. Is that clear? We see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. 
OK. And maybe just a, a, a summary? Or you... Yeah, yeah, we can do a quick summary about yeah. what we just showcased. Yeah, just to, to make it clear. So, yeah, so data, data personalization. So it's good for you as a builder. You build only one chart and you can address all your clients, all your users uh, with only a single component. So it's good uh, to scale. If tomorrow you have 50, 100 uh, more uh, customer, you don't have to uh, add some stuff in Tucan. It's already set up. It's good for the end user, of course, because he has uh, a personalized data. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always good. Um, the way the embedding software communicates uh, some information uh, to Tucan is going through tokens to containing user attributes. Uh, everything in Tucan uh, to personalize the data will be uh, done uh, by using uh, this user attribute. So you can filter the data, you can generate uh, personalized uh, storytelling as well in all the contextual uh, feature we have. And uh, you have this option to set up default values, uh, which is quite new and allow you to um, define a context where you are comfortable uh, as a user uh, to build your charts. And uh, yeah, and we just build uh, an embedded chart uh, in under 30 minutes, uh, not no, yet. Almost but, 40 uh, But uh, yeah, that's basically it uh, from, uh, from scratch. Yes, we have one or uh, five minutes, uh, I think, for a quick Q&A. And I have a question in the chat. What type of uh, profile and person do you usually have uh, in the team, the customer have in the team? What um, type of, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what type of profile? Yes, profile and uh, uh, abilities in the team for an embedded analytics uh, project. Okay, so I will just show you, Thank you a, a slide to illustrate this, uh, I think it's, uh, it should be here. Right. Yeah. Anyways. So basically you need, uh, it's not uh, specific to, to current project. It's like uh, in every embedded analytics project, but you need to uh, fill these four main roles. You need someone that is responsible of the uh, need uh, representing the end user, the product. Generally, it's someone coming from the product team. So it can be directly the CPO or product manager. Sometimes it might be a customer success manager. So, but basically someone that knows very well the end user and can uh, express uh, their voice uh, for them into the project. You need, of course, someone that is responsible of the data part. So generally, uh, which is responsible of your database uh, and how the uh, data is prepared uh, before uh, uh, coming into uh, Toucan. So if you have a data team, it's generally, of course, for the data team. If you don't have it, it's generally uh, the tech team and a back-end profile that can uh, take this role. Uh, the third role is the builder. So the guy that will build the charts in Toucan. Here, uh, it depends. Uh, we, as Toucan is fully no code and easy to use, uh, it can be someone from the product team, sometimes from the CSM team. And of course, uh, it can be a developer or data analyst that will be uh, comfortable with, uh, with this tool. And uh, of course, you need uh, a developer that will integrate uh, the script into your uh, own software. Uh, and here I am just talking about roles, but uh, I know uh, that I have, yes, this chart, uh, this um, uh, flow in order to show you a traditional uh, embedded analytics project. Um, and what we can see uh, in the real life is that it's not so linear. So you don't set up uh, perfectly 
your database at the beginning, you generally don't have a clear uh, design that will not change uh, uh, when you will build the thing uh, in Toucan. So basically, and when it, it's even more important when it's your first project, you will have a lot of back and forth between this step of the when you build the chart and how you configure your database actually. So we just observed uh, within our clients that especially on the first project when the app builder and the data integrator is the same person, uh, the project is way faster. It's not faster, it's way faster because you have a lot of back and forth here. And if it's the same uh, person, yeah, you, you don't need to align, to be aligned, to, uh, to think uh, in a token way. You, you, you just do it. Uh, so yeah, I would say that for a first project, uh, the little thing we, we are seeing uh, with, uh, with our customer, if the app builder and the data integrator is the same people, it's better, but uh, it works as well when you have uh, two different people in two different teams, it works as well, but you need uh, more communications. For the second, the third projects, it doesn't matter because you already know how to design properly, how to configure your database properly. So that, yeah, you, it, you don't care if it's different people because uh, you have a, a common knowledge or of uh, how things work. So yeah, so you need these four roles okay. and uh, our little tips, uh, a builder, data integrator, send people for the first project is uh, uh, a good way to deliver faster. All right. Uh, it's almost uh, 45 minutes. Okay. So yeah, I think we can close this session if there is no more question in the chat. Uh, ah, uh, yes, maybe a quick question about the user attributes and the mechanism for extra variables. Uh, maybe we... Ah, yes. Uh, the, the question is, uh, does this mechanic apply to uh, extra variables? So what is an extra variables? I will just uh, show you. So I will have... Uh, because sometimes uh, you send some information to the two count charts that are not linked to the user, basically. Uh, it's coming directly from your software. And the main uh, use case here is when you want to keep your own filters from your software for the experience, uh, user experience purpose. You want to keep uh, something uh, uh, aligned with the other page in your website. So you want to keep your own filters in order to filter the data in the two count charts. And to do this mechanic, it works with what we call external variables that you can send with uh, our SDK. I will not go into the detail, but here, uh, Breezy is sending in the same way as a user attribute uh, with a token. Here, he's sending external variables. So on the sales here, Clément, uh, thanks to the SDK. But the mechanic inside uh, Toucan is uh, exactly the same. Uh, I will just show you. Here in my variables, I talk about the user attribute, but I have the ability to uh, create external variables in the same way to set up a default value for me uh, as, a, as a builder. So yes, it works uh, in the same. But we'll, I think we'll, see, we'll uh, do a proper video dedicated yeah. to the SDK and all the features around it, and especially the external variables. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Some things. Perfect. Looking forward for the video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. Oh, uh,
maybe the last question. Uh, thank you for the webinar. It's always interesting to look uh, forward to attending more sessions like this. Okay. Uh, thank you for the feedback. Thank you. Uh, the next session, we, as I said in the in the beginning of the webinar, we'll do that every month. Uh, so the next session will be in October, uh, second week of October, and uh, yeah around Thursday, same hour, so yeah. And uh, I will communicate on the topic uh, maybe next week. So yeah, stay tuned, guys. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. Thank uh, you. And uh, yeah, uh, as we say in French, bon appétit. And uh, <laughs> see you next time, guys. And we, we you will receive the, the replay in your, in your email uh, right after. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.